Timothy Buck has over seven years of experience in the international hotel entertainment industry. In these seven years, he grew from an entertainer to a team leader, even all the way up as an entertainment manager. For his job, he has traveled all over not just Europe, but also Asia and Africa. He's a man with a big heart, a huge smile, a lot of life experience and a great friend of mine. You live your dream and I think this is the most important thing, it's living the dream. And I think you, you grow up and you get rich of experience and uh, you don't need money. You learn that you don't need money. Money is there to, to survive, kind of survive. I'm Dario de Dobbelare and welcome to Ciao Ciao Bye Bye, a show about living life abroad in the hotel entertainment sector. Here we dive deep into what it is like living all over Europe, meeting thousands of people, pushing boundaries and living life to the fullest. Today, episode 1, Values and Priorities. My guest today is a devoted friend of mine, Timothy Bock. Okay, uh, Timo, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. It's been a while. Um, please uh, introduce yourself. Who are you and uh, where do you come from? So, uh, my name is Timo. Um, I am from Belgium. I have been traveling a lot, a lot around the world uh, because I have been entertainer, team leader, manager. And then uh, in, the, in the lot of different places, I've been in a different continent also. I've been in Africa, I've been in Europe, I've been in Asia. So uh, a lot of different destinations. And now since the uh, amazing coronavirus decided to come, uh, I live in the Netherlands, uh, where I actually found a new job over here. And I'm living my best life over here. Okay, so you so you moved to uh, the Netherlands after the coronavirus uh, uh, struck the world, and now you are in the in the Netherlands and you are, uh, found yourself a, a new job there. Yeah, exactly. During the the lockdown, uh, Belgium was really strict about the rules, and uh, I've been there with no no job, no actually money coming uh, on my account because everything was blocked with tourism. And uh, my girlfriend is actually living in the Netherlands, so I decided to move over here because it was easy. I have already a contact here, and I decided to move with her. And uh, over here, they didn't really have strict rules about uh, lockdown, so it was more easy for me to be free here and find something. And after two weeks, I found something over here. Okay, okay, this makes sense. Uh, and like you, like you were saying before, you were working a lot in uh, in the entertainment uh, sector. Can you maybe tell me a little bit what uh, what is entertainment or what is hotel entertainment? This is the the dream job, brother. This is amazing. <laughs> this is the whole thing. After school, I study uh, high school for graphic design, and I okay. work um, during nearly three years, two years and a half in a company who was in charge of the um, communication of a supermarket. Okay. And, um, Wait, what so, time span are we talking? Which, which year was this? 2010, something like that. And uh, basically what happened is um, I broke up with a girlfriend. And like every boy, I decide it's the time to be free. And I decide to book some holidays with my friends. And we moved to to yeah to Turkey, I think it was, and we have an amazing okay. time. And then um, I start to speak a little bit with the animation team there. And oh, you was, went on a on a vacation, on a holiday to yeah, Turkey. Yeah, yeah, was holidays with uh, my cousin and my friend. And uh, I spoke with the entertainment team over there, but just few contacts. But I, I realized what it was. I came back home. I came back to work, and I was in the car in the traffic and then I was looking at the sun through the window because uh, I was on my <laughs> office and I don't see the sun, I just see the traffic and I spent two hours in my car every day <laughs> and uh, yes, I just decided, you know what, I don't have time for this and uh, I I've sent my CV on a few uh, websites because I was already DJ and uh, okay. My family have a form, and uh, I used to go there for the weekend with the kids. I was a kind of entertainer already there, 
but just for the weekend, uh, we can just to help. What did you do there? Um, it was, what, you know, they have a lot of animals, and I have to show the animals oh, and to kids. And uh, it was my first experience with entertainer, and then I decided, you know what? Just, I send my CV everywhere what I can find on internet, everywhere. Then I got an interview, and um, the guy offered me to leave in two weeks. Oh, it's really fast. Really, it was. Uh, I signed the contract like I don't, I don't care anymore. Let's just do it. You just signed it. They didn't, they didn't know yet about on your, uh, on your job or if. No, if, nothing, um... nothing. So it means I have two weeks to empty my apartment, to <laughs> find someone for my dog, uh, to find a solution. Oh my god! If the and just, just uh, let's do it. Life is too short. Let's do it. I signed a contract. Um, yeah, the company is dead already now, so I can speak yeah. about it. Um, I signed a contract. I have a really good salary as a graphic designer. I was around 1,800 euros. Okay, uh, yeah. When you're really young, it's a good uh, salary. Of course. Uh, I signed for a contract of 450 euro months. <laughs> this is the new contract in the, uh, in, yes, as an, so as an entertainer. Do. You need to, to explain that to everyone. Uh, oh my God. So the first thing it's, uh, I spoke with my uh, company uh, and I uh, explained to the manager, I want to leave. But of course, mm -hmm. when you work in a company since many years, well, it was not so much, but a few years, you need a few times before you can leave. So I make a deal with of him. Of course. So he yeah, let you need me to go. do like a certain uh, uh, period before yeah, your contract is one or finished. Two months and uh, I made a, a deal with him. He just let me go and I don't want any money. So I make like a kind of negotiation. Okay, it's like a, a handshake. Like, um, yeah. No, no, we you did actually a real contract. We did a real contract about that. But uh, yeah. we both accept the, these rules. Uh, he was winner. Or he was a win win contract. Exactly. And, um, so I had two weeks to empty my apartment, to find somewhere to put all the boxes, <laughs> to find where to put my uh, car. So I need to <laughs> find the owner of my apartment and explain her I'm living in two of weeks. Of course. Uh, of course, I had no money at this time. I was young. So of course, yeah. uh, I cannot pay it. Like, yeah, hey, I'll some money and then uh, leave me alone. No, I have to find some deal. But she was quite nice. Um, OK. So it was good. I think she was actually entertainer before, if I remember. I think she was also. So she understood. All right. She understood what I wanted. How old? Uh, how old were you back then? I was uh, twenty-three, I think, something like that. Okay. You're still at school, probably. Yeah. Yeah, and, twenty-three. Uh, is crazy. Yeah, it was seven years ago. Yeah. Well, after that, I have to explain to my family, to my friends, um, I'm leaving. You you spoke about this with nobody. You just decided it for yourself. It. Or... Only me knew it. Wow! Uh, took this decision alone. Um, a lot of people, you know, it's it's for everything. Uh, tell you it's not a good idea. It's dangerous. Come yeah. on, you have a good position. They want to protect you. Um, yeah, maybe, but uh, it's, yeah. it's you know, there's a lot of people speaking about that on internet and I'm not a really a big fan of that to be honest like people about speaking about the comfort zone and um mm -hmm. but it's a little bit that it's what happened actually I was like you know what I just let do it it was the worst that can happen and uh yeah some where did you go then uh, Morocco oh I've never yeah, been but for a first destination uh it's quite scary for for the family of course uh, to know I was so far away right? because it's also an other continent. It's also an other yeah. uh, culture. And is Did you need a special visa as well to, yeah, to go I there? To, I have to have a passport, exactly. Um, mm. So I have to do the uh, fast procedure to have a passport also. Of course, because you only had two weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't actually remember, to be honest, how many mm. we happened with the passport. But he was he was amazing company really. We were there with no authorization of work, so I had oh, I was no. there with a, a tourist visa. So and you were working kind of illegally ish. Uh, completely not kind, completely illegally. And um, when when you explain that to your parents also and your family, and it's normal. Yeah. I, I just when you come from a nice like, nice uh, paying job and. It looks like I, yeah, yeah. Imagine I have I have a house, 
I have an apartment uh, with the garden and... Uh, you were living on your own, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the wide gates and uh, the small parking, oh, the small man. garden. I have the car, I have the dog and the rest. Uh, I have a good job and I decide to just leave. Yeah, I think it, I think it's your was your parents' biggest nightmare coming true. Actually, not my parents. They were they were quite happy for me. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, no, no, they were quite. Uh, how, how did they react? Well, uh, yeah, they were really support me. Just just like you want to live your best life, just do it. You are too young for that. Oh, that's really nice. The thing it's it's um, my family. They were a little bit worried about what can happen to me, but not really seeing like um i'm gonna have problem because they know uh, i can figure out in every situation so yeah i was not too scary it was more about the fact i'm going to a country with no visa where the police is not yeah but the me. whole um yeah the paperwork was not really uh sounding that uh yeah completely uh, yeah. i had no i actually don't have a real contract in belgium as well it was a part-time contract <laughs> when I was working. Oh, when you were working for the other company uh, before as a graphic yeah, yeah. designer. No, no, the graphic designer, that, that was a perfect contract. That was a really, really nice contract. Everything was really perfect. Okay. And this is the fact when I moved to the uh, other uh, company, mm -hmm. uh, the contract was a little bit uh, strange because in Belgium, you cannot pay someone 450 euro ah, to work from okay, the morning to way. the night. Yeah, so it was not a it was not a Belgian company or it was a Belgian company. It was a Belgian company, but they have some strange things. I just accept it. I sign it. <laughs> You're just happy to go to uh, to a new country. Sentence. No race, no fun. That's crazy. What, what happened to the dog actually? Because we, we're all the way in Morocco now. But you, you... I have a friend, and uh, at the same time, his dog passed away. Okay. Uh, and um, but that was actually the biggest. Uh, point for me when i meet i met the guy for the first time for the job um i told him i need to find a solution for my dog if i don't find a solution for my dog i'm not doing it yeah so that was the whole point it was just my dog. this was the the biggest uh, thing yes, for because you because there's a lot of people uh, taking the the animals and then when something is coming they just lose all the responsibility exactly and that was not my idea that was not my idea no i wanted for for this dog to be uh on the good place with the right people mm. and uh, i actually have no contact anymore with um the, the 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 people where is the dog okay but i know it was on the right place because it was a family uh everything was completely really fine and they would the take dog. care of him yeah yeah i i got contact with them few years after but at mm -hmm. the moment i lost a little bit of contact with them of course but when you move to a different was, country yeah. it's very hard to stay in in touch with everyone yeah, yeah right? especially if we were talking about multiple years because you didn't do this job for one year yeah, how many course. years were you in uh in a different country uh, I've been uh, abroad for seven years. Yeah, so when you are moving, uh, it's every six months-ish, right? Uh, around every six months yeah, you move to a different yeah, destination. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, so when you do this for uh, seven years, yeah, you start making friends on these different destinations, different places. So it's sometimes hard to, to stay in contact and also to... Um, this is something which was uh, hard for me to to find things to speak about with people you have uh, at home from before because you live this new life and you meet this, um, these new people from uh, different countries, different cultures and it's very hard to, yeah, to find things to talk about with the people, uh, friends uh, from school, from an old job at home. It doesn't mean that you don't like them. Yeah, yeah, but the thing is, uh, you actually have friends everywhere, and at the same time, you have friends nowhere. Yeah, this is the whole point with this job. Um, and also, you learn how to be uh, alone, and you mm. you learn. Um, it teach you how to to find a way by yourself. How to be happy city. with yourself. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's also, of course, I, I, I love a lot of people around the world. Mm -hmm. But um, I also learned how to take the, the decision by myself. Because the thing is, before, uh, when I was here in Belgium, yeah. you have a lot of things, I ah, should speak with them. Yeah, I should speak with, 
with them or I should speak with my parents. And when you live mm -hmm. like that abroad, especially when I was, for example, in Thailand, uh, when you have to take a decision, um, there's a time difference also. You cannot call of people course. at any time. What's the time difference between it was Thailand seven, and Belgium? Seven hours, I think. Seven or nine hours. I don't remember wow. exactly. Uh, my mom actually never understood that she keep calling me at four o'clock in the night to say good uh, good morning or good night. I don't remember, <laughs> but I remember to woke up. She, in she didn't understand that there was a different time in in Thailand. Okay, <laughs> that's really funny. She never understood, and it, it, she was. I don't remember if it was seven hours before or after, but yeah, mm. she woke me up so many times at four o'clock, <laughs> and uh, like like normal. And yeah, I was of course worried was something happened because the phone is the. When you live abroad, the phone is the only contact you have with um, with home outside for the good uh, news and the bad news as well. Yeah. Uh, in seven years, a lot of things happen. Uh, of course. People die. I lost people, and uh, the news came with the phone. Who did you uh, Who did you lose? Oh, I lost uh, a lot of people actually. I lost my uh, godmother. Mm. I lost my godfather. Uh, my grandfather. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I lost uh, friends, but at the same time, oh. you get good news as well with the phone. Yeah, uh, my sister had been twice uh, moms uh, when oh. I was a boat, and I remember. So you're an that, uncle now. Yeah, Uncle Timo, Uncle Pims. Pims. And, uh, Pims, yeah. Um, what does it mean, Pims? Uh, no idea. It's just <laughs> okay. They just, they just <laughs> made it up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, so the the phone is the only contact you have from to outside yeah and uh, yeah i remember spending nights on on my phone for good news and bad news yeah and um it's it's a really different life and uh, i think also uh, uh, what we 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 see is it's um for people we have the amazing life oh my god you have the good life you yeah. live in the sun. You Can live you give some, yeah, some examples exactly of what, the, what, what they see as the good life? Because there's many, many nice things about the entertainment yeah, yeah, of course. life as well. But the thing was, for me, uh, as, as entertainer, when I started, um, I didn't have the expectation to have the perfect life. I knew mm -hmm. from before, uh, home heart is this job. I mean, the practice. I mean, the uh, bad what, time. what kind of practice? Like the dance practice uh, when you have to 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 rehearse until yeah. really late in the night for the dance yeah. shows, right? There's yeah, a, exactly. you're doing dance shows, uh, comedy shows. You're hosting quizzes. Uh, yeah, doing that was so the many thing. Things I, was, on stage. I was really um, aware uh, aware about the the the, the fact it's mm. not a perfect life. Uh, you just don't go there. You play every game, then you go to bed. And no, I I knew the the whole thing knowing like uh we had to practice okay, because a lot that's very rare usually people don't know that there's really this whole no for uh, me it was the opposite i knew what i was expecting about that okay so i was not expect a perfect life i knew when it's gonna go on uh be uh entertainer so i knew i knew it because i spoke a lot with entertainer before i i, yeah, yeah. I saw the other side okay that's good that's very good and uh, i have been in country like uh, egypt um, why it's, uh, where I'm, where I'm, in I'm, Egypt where were you? I was actually in Marsalam. It's uh, completely oh. the start of the of yeah. The I've been there. Uh, I had really bad experience in Egypt. Um, it was how long um, were you there for? Uh, too long. <laughs> too long, brother. <laughs> What's too long? We're we talking six months. No, but no, it was less than that. It was five months, I think. Mm. About um, half a year. Yeah, but it was, you know, I, I cannot say the country is bad or anything because uh, this is not at all what I like to say. It's just, yeah. I think I had a really bad experience. In which way? The fact I was on the middle of nowhere, um, there was the hotel and nothing else. But when I say nothing else, it's really nothing else. You have to take a taxi. Uh, yeah, in, in Egypt, uh, well, the, the parts of Egypt I've seen at least, it's really like you have these clusters of hotels. Uh, so all the hotels are like next to next to one another. It's like a small village uh, where all the hotels are in a, in a group together. And to enter the hotel, you need the bracelet of of the yeah, hotel yeah. that you're staying in. So it's not like you can 
easily go in 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 different hotels so you're kind of restricted to oh, but for your me it own was hotel right? it was worse than that it's not we had different hotel we have one hotel on the middle of nowhere like oh, you can actually so it was not in a group the, no actually i don't know if it's possible to put it but i can actually send you the localization and you can make a zoom to see it's so there's the just of the hotel no. and then desert left desert right desert everywhere yeah exactly Oh shit! Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like that. I think the the close of thing was for around five 30. months. Yeah, 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 and also the, you know, we are not tourists there. We are uh, staff, and we are. Yeah. And I completely understand that because it's not about racism, but we have a little bit the same. When you have people coming in your country to take your job, you're like, yeah, yeah because people, people are working there for. When we have actually no money. Here, yeah. So I have a really shitty salary. Salary uh, is still 450 yeah. uh, in Egypt, but still uh, double, maybe triple the what the people there get. Yeah. And so I the local the, entertainers uh, were earning like 150 euros a, a month. Yeah, yeah, something say. like that. But yeah. I am so of course, there. of course, they feel jealous because you're coming to to this of country. Course. But I, like uh, I said, I completely understand this reaction mm. because it's going to be probably the same for me. Yeah. Um, but the life was really not easy there. We were not welcome and we can feel it. And um, it was not the best experience, but at the same time, I am a really positive person. Yeah. And at the same time... This is how I know you. Yeah, but the thing is, you can have a really negative thing, negative period, but you have to take the positive in it. And learn, learn lessons from it. Uh, is, is this what you mean? or? But just, just imagine... It's it's a little bit the same situation of being in a prison, but be it free in the prison because I have nearly no internet, um, so it mm -hmm. means no contact with the outside, with my family or anything. Of course, because you um, cannot call uh, through a regular what, phone call, right? Um, you have you are really sad because it doesn't happen how you want it. Uh, the yeah. people don't treat you right. Um, and at the same time, you don't want the guests to feel it. So, from of the course guests, not. You have to um, guests, yeah. act very but happily. And... Months, I lost 20 kilos in five months in this country. <laughs> wow. Yes. Yeah, I lost 20 kilos in five months in this country. That's but crazy. But at the same time, again, you take the positive. I met one of my best friends there, and I'm still in contact with him because now he's living in Belgium. That's very nice. Was he, was he Egyptian or were... Yeah, uh, he's Egyptian. He was uh, the DJ of the hotel. He actually teach me everything about being a DJ. And, okay. Um, I made a promise with him because I knew his girlfriend was from Belgium. And uh, I made a promise with him when he's going to be in Belgium, we're going to see each other again. And I respect my promise. So we see each other. We saw each other again. Uh, we saw a few times. No, it's a little bit difficult with the lockdown and mm -hmm. all happen now, uh, but we're still in contact and we plan to see each other again. But yeah, I met amazing people and he's still one, one of my brother now. Yeah, it's, it's that's really very nice. nice. So always take the probably positive. someone you wouldn't have met if you were, if you were working in no, a different and, place. And you know, I, I came there and uh, I told this guy, I am DJ. He said, okay. And I was DJ on my uh, computer. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, with the software and he said yeah. no this is not DJ and he took the time to really teach me this oh, is how to do it so and, you learned uh, how to DJ from, from, from him yeah brother I had nothing else to do there really but me, I had nothing <laughs> else to do there but uh, I always uh, love it and uh, he really teach me the, the, the basic thing and I spent a lot of time there uh, watching him and uh, this is how my uh, whole uh, DJ career started, because like you said... He sparked your uh, curiosity as a Yeah, yeah, a I, DJ. I was already a lot in it, but he really teach me a other way, because I was a little bit like everyone is uh, in his room making two or three uh, sound effects and yeah. trying to be David Guetta. Um, <laughs> but it showed me the other way, the old school way. It's not just about the software. It's about how everything works. And okay. it, it was amazing. And uh, this is how everything starts. And 
Uh, I know I show him because I made a really crazy party. You have been in some crazy party where I've been DJ. Yeah, definitely. And, um, is he still a DJ now? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, more for 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 the fun and for himself. Okay. Um, but he continue. I think he also have a, a channel on on YouTube or something like that with with the mix. But um, okay, if you if you find it, we can put it in the yeah, 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 uh, yeah, in the side notes, and then people can check it out. Because it, it was really amazing, and um, yeah, this is home. Everything start for me to be to be DJ because yeah, like we said, I've been entertainer. But in big part of this entertainer thing have been for me DJ because I've been actually DJ for big event yeah. uh, as entertainer. So yeah, this is. Uh, what's the nicest? What's the nicest party you you did as a as a DJ? Well, it is a lot actually, but I mm. think it's. Uh, I've been in DJ with really really crazy party like the training. I've been a, a DJ for training for toy. With a lot of people, I've been for all the the training for the entertainers, right? Exactly, with the new entertainer, I've been DJ for um, the ending party in Crete when it was around three hundred people, something like that. Yeah, I was actually was really not busy. there myself, but I heard many uh, good stories about this because we were both working in in yeah, Crete. It was, it was last Crete. year, two thousand nineteen. Uh, yeah, it was last year actually. Yeah. Yeah, and to celebrate the the end of the season, that the the, the season yeah, would exactly. be uh, finishing soon, um, they would throw a party, and then you were a DJ there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a responsibility to be DJ there. Um, I did uh, two years that uh, I did also in course before for this kind of party. So for for two years, I was also kind of really in the music uh, thing, in the DJ thing yeah. also. So that was quite cool, but I think so. That was really the, the biggest party I did uh, in Crete. Uh, no, I can say it. I don't have contract anymore, but I've been DJ at the same time uh, <laughs> in some clubs there, but just for the fun because you know it's like uh, you are artist and and you need to 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 share with everybody yep. what you like. So uh, after after work you just you were dj because you liked it in uh, in a course, club of course but uh, yeah. we can be we can be honest with everyone uh, but uh, yeah, of course we are not a lot uh, when you have a contract with one company and most of the company are like that anyway when you have a contract with a company you are not allowed to do uh, something else for other companies especially when it's the same uh, kind of job yeah and uh, but if I, the thing was i was there i didn't get paid it was just for the fun so yeah, yeah. I didn't really have uh, much trouble about that because it's practice anyway. Uh, as a DJ, you need to practice. Yeah, and definitely, definitely. And it was just just for uh, for fun. It's not like you were making uh, I don't know thousands of uh, of euros. No, from no, it, it was just actually for fun. not for the money. I have no contract. I have no money yeah. going in my hands. They okay, maybe they give you a drink or something. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it was but, the deal. Yeah. yeah, we get free drinks and uh, exactly table and everything. Yeah, it was the the, the thing. And um, but actually, my nice uh, uh, party was a small party, really. Where where was this party? It was in Tunisia. Oh, Tunisia! And I think, to be honest, like if if some friends are watching this video, they're gonna remember this party. <laughs> we have been honestly. It was more, not more than fifty people, not more than that, maybe less. Okay. And we have a kind of, a, yeah, it was company party. Which company were you working for back then? Uh, well, it was with uh, Thomas Cook. The um, travel company who is no longer... Um, yeah, exactly. Who went and, bankrupt. Uh, I didn't work for them directly, but we were working in uh, like... Um, they had contract with my company. We were working all together. Okay, it was like a sister company where they hired entertainers from a company yeah, exactly, exactly, who would yeah. send them to yeah, Thomas exactly, Cook. That was totally yeah. that. And um, so it was a party there, and uh, really we were not so many, but it was an island. Don't ask me where the electricity is coming from. I have no <laughs> idea. I have no idea. There was a cable with electricity. Is it coming from a boat? Is it coming from a cable? Maybe a generator. And there was electricity. This is the whole point. <laughs> and we were, <laughs> we were like a four or five DJ. I think it was mm -hmm. maybe more DJ than the people actually dancing. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a table and we have, I, I 
I still have picture of that. We have I don't know how many controllers everywhere, and everybody play at the same time. But it was amazing. We had so much fun. It was amazing, and it was not a big party. And we just enjoy it, and this electricity keep turning off, and it, it was just <laughs> on the middle of the island. We didn't expect to, to to have a party there, but yeah, it was amazing. It just happened. It, it wasn't even a planned party. Just you, no, you it was, started it was the party. No, it was because I took my controller and my laptop ah, with me, okay. so it was probably the plan. To be honest, it was really long time ago. But yeah. if I had the controller and and uh, and the laptop with me, so it was probably the plan. But still, we were playing on the middle of nowhere. Uh, at least we did not have complaint from the neighbor, but it was, <laughs> there were none. Uh, it was not neighbor. Um, yeah, but that, that, this is one of my nicer uh, memories about being DJ. That's crazy. Yeah, but I had the opportunity to play also on the boat trip. Oh. To be DJ on the boat trip for the National Day of Belgium on the middle of course. Wow. And it was like a, a boat party then. To be honest, again, it was maybe 30 or 40 people, but yeah. it doesn't matter, you know. No, of course yeah. not. You're, you know, you're, you're in, the, uh, you're the in Greece, you're on a nice island, uh, exactly. the sun is shining. Of course, you, you want to make a nice party on a boat. If they yeah, ask yeah. you, the only answer is yes. Of course. Do you want, we have electricity, we have speaker, let's do it. It's, it's, yeah. it's possible. So this is, yeah, this is uh, one of the <laughs> nicest memory. Yeah, it was really nice. Oh, well, yes. it, it does sound amazing. I wish I was there. I wish I was there. Was it, uh, where about in Kos, was it, um, you were working, was what? it in uh, Kos Town? Yeah, it was or in Kos Town, but we were on the boat trip because the, the thing was, again, on the on the island, I don't know what I have with the island. I was <laughs> on the island for the national day and it was actually all the Belgian people on the island to, to celebrate that together. So we were staff, but also some guests, they booked the trip. And they oh, decided guests to, from your hotel uh, were also on this boat. My hotel from other hotel from everywhere from the island, in the different resorts. So make, they make like a, so to explain a little bit how it works. Mm -hmm. um, we have the entertainers in hotels. We have reps who are in charge to actually sell uh, excursion. And okay, so uh, the are, entertainers are staying in the hotel, and then the reps they do. Um, they, they do the trip. People want to do trip. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An excursion, and they can book it there. Exactly. And on this uh, special day, uh, they decide to organize an excursion, and the, the Belgium uh, guests can book this Belgium excursion, especially for this day. Okay. And there are some Belgium entertainers to join uh, this trip, and I was, uh, yeah, one of them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, it was quite cool. To be honest, it was quite cool. And uh, if, but th this is the whole life. You, you don't understand. You don't actually remember how it happened. But you was. It there. just happens. Yeah, it, it just, just happens. happens. You're just there, and life happens around you, and it's like, yeah, it's it's crazy, yeah. right? It's crazy. Just take the opportunity and just let do it. You know, actually, I, I have a good question for you because now you've you've been in. Uh, in the Netherlands for uh, about six months now, because yeah, Corona started, started about six months ago. Okay. Yeah. So if you think back to to this lifestyle, because it's a, a completely different life you were uh, you were yeah. living back then. What's the thing you miss the most from from all? Because it's a very wide uh, amount of things that that you are doing. And um, if you have to if you have to pick one thing, what is it that you miss the most about this? This job. I think I'm gonna surprise you. Go for it. But uh, the, the 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 thing I I miss the most, um, actually, a lot of people think is the sun, is the the mm. fun, the no, because when I decide to to stop, of course, the corona helped me to decide faster. But um, yeah, I was kind of ready to already stop. Yeah. Um, so I don't really miss so much uh, a lot of things. What I actually miss the most is being outside. This is the thing. Oh, just uh, just it's being in outside. Open air. Yes, because um, when you are entertainer, you live outside. You are on your feet from the morning to the night. You yeah. only sit to eat, and sometimes you don't have the time to sit 
for eating. Yeah, you keep, you're so, always moving, right? Yeah, exactly. And from the uh, morning, from like is, 10 o'clock in the morning till 11, 12, yeah, 1 o'clock in the night, you're in the hotel working. So, And then even afterwards, you go to parties, so you're still moving. Uh, yeah, of course. So yeah. this is the whole thing. And uh, I think what I, I, I miss the most, it's uh, exploring and moving. This exploring, is I, as in uh, exploring different countries, or uh... no? You know, I, I, um, as entertainer, uh, we don't have so much time off. Mm -hmm. But the first thing you do when you have days off, it's um, when you finish to sleep for two months. Um, <laughs> yeah, you do. You do sleep quite long you, on your yeah, day yeah. off, right? But um, when you decide uh, you have to go more far away from your room. Um, yeah. This is when you actually take the time to try to to explore a little bit where you are because you remember you are you're only there for a short amount of time, right? Well, like yeah. six months, but it's only a few days off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you are on destination where people paid a lot of money to be there because it's actually an amazing place, and you have yeah. the opportunity to see that for free, mm. and uh, you realize. Um, you will not spend your time home in your room when outside is 40 degrees you have a, a blue beach sea. yeah exactly it's uh it's a shame to stay in the room when it's like that so you start to exploring and uh you always need to see more and more and more and it's got to be <laughs> a drugs because you really need yeah that. it does feel like a drug right because everything is new everything is exciting yeah. it's like it never stops, but by the time you get used to uh, to a location because you've been there for six months, you move to the next one, and it's like you start all over again. Because yeah, exactly. at the end of the season, you are you are very tired because, like you said, you work long hours from the morning till the night. Uh, and when I say night, I literally mean like night. Like eleven o'clock was the earliest I uh, I ever finished. Oh, yeah, it can be really late. I remember practice then practice until four or five in the in yeah. the morning. Yeah, this was and, way uh, before. They don't do yeah, this. Yeah, my team uh, gonna remember that if they are listening to this podcast, they they gonna remember <laughs> one day. Uh, yeah, it's a small story. Tell, but, tell uh, me about it. I told them they're gonna kill me for that because I'm sure they all <laughs> remember this story. I was the team leader, so I was in charge of the team there. Where are we right now? In which destination? In Crete, but two years ago. Okay. And I told my team, I feel bad. Sorry, guys. If you're still watching <laughs> that, I feel really sorry about that. I told them, uh, listen, guys, at one o'clock, we finish the dance practice <laughs> and we go out together. Mm -hmm. And To celebrate. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, come on, I want something nice because I was quite strict about uh, the dance show because I, 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 I want that look really nice and I was in charge of the team. So it was mm -hmm. really important for me. And uh, well, we have kind of deal. Um, let's do it. Uh, correctly and then let's party and I told them I remember I feel bad about it I told them guys <laughs> one o'clock we go okay and, uh, in the night yeah. right one o'clock at night yeah, yeah in the morning one o'clock we go uh, we take shower quickly and then let's party and mm -hmm. uh, it sounds late for normal people for entertainer one o'clock is the beginning of the life exactly and, um, I remember we keep dancing, we keep dancing, and, and really I see them sweating, and uh, I feel tired, but I don't want to show them because I am the team leader. Yeah, yeah, you want, you want to stay strong. And I keep watching my watch, and no, it's okay, it's not yet one o'clock, it's not yet <laughs> one o'clock. And um, at some point, I realize it's really, we are practicing since I feel really long time, and it's still <laughs> yeah. not yet one o'clock on my watch. And uh, none of them actually wanted to say it. My watch was actually broke. <laughs> <laughs> what time was it? I don't know, but it was too late for it to go out. <laughs> oh, no, Timo. So, so you, you kept them practicing and rehearsing again and again and again and again. And actually... <laughs> <laughs> you were supposed to be finished like a few hours before already. Uh, yeah, it was, it was no, not minutes, it was about hours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like three o'clock, four o'clock in the night. Yeah, I think already. it was around this time, three or four o'clock. Oh, yeah. man. And the next morning, they have to be 
fresh again, right? Yeah, but they were ready to party anyway, so they were ready yeah, to yeah, party. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course, but uh, just for the listeners to give a little bit of uh, perspective, it, it's like a very, uh, a very long day, first of all, and uh, yeah, this, <laughs> this is crazy. Uh, so if you are watching me, I am sorry about this story, guys. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. Yeah, that was a really, really good experience. <laughs> that was really that, funny. That's crazy. You know, from from uh, so you've done this for seven years, right? It's seven years, but uh, the difference uh, between a lot of uh, entertainers, and uh, I think this is the difference between you and me. A lot of entertainers actually stop for the winter. Yeah, they take um, a winter break. Because, uh, like you said, the season is about six a month, and a lot of people doing that just for the summer and take the time to uh, rest in the winter or have other job in the winter. Yeah, or get for to see me, their family and friends yeah, exactly. again uh, at the home. The thing for me, I uh, decide uh, to never stop. Uh, so during the seven years, I have maybe one or two breaks. Whoa. But that's it. The rest, I did summer, winter, summer, winter, summer, winter. That's so crazy. Mean, I have the high season nearly every month. Yeah. So how many seasons did you do then? Uh, we count last time, I think. Let's count them right now. Oh, yeah. Where okay, did you right. start? Uh, if, I, I don't know if we can actually count by season because uh, some uh, season can be cut uh, for the winter. I did, yeah. for example... Uh, the first part of the winter in one destination and the second part of the other destination. Okay. But if I have to count uh, all the places I have been, Morocco, Egypt, Tunisia, uh, Crete, Kos, Corfu, mm -hmm. uh, Lanzarote. Then after Lanzarote was a Mallorca. After Mallorca was uh, Malaga. Oh. I was in Malaga for few few weeks, not long, but few weeks. Mm -hmm. Then uh, Thailand. Yeah, I was going to say Thailand, right? Yeah, yeah. Thailand. Then Crete. Then yeah, Grand Canaria. Mm. Uh, Lanzarote. Then uh, Crete. This is oh 14. My God, we're in 14 places. Yeah, you moved 14 times. That's crazy. So it's literally every six months if we uh, take the average from seven yeah, and years. And Crete again. 15. Yeah. That's crazy. Again, yeah, fifteen. Yeah, fifteen. Whoa. Yeah, then then you you deserve a break and you need to. Yeah, I talk. I talk few few times. I had break, uh, but like we said, no, I actually never really stop it. Yeah, I I actually never took the decision. Well, this winter, uh, before the corona happened, I took the decision to take a break. But mm -hmm. it was actually the first time I actually decide to take a break. Yeah. Sometimes we have problems with contract and it's not always easy. Yeah, or a uh, visa so or something like this. So you had visa, a break. It's a problem with hotel. The hotel is not mm. open. It's, it's a lot of different things. And yeah, of course, also... when you did 15 destinations, it makes yeah. sense. Sometimes things go wrong. And I've been uh, with no job for, for, for a few months, but then you find something else because the, the whole thing... When you travel like that, it's um, also the fact I didn't speak about that. But I start this job, <laughs> I didn't speak any other language than French. When you started as an entertainer, you just spoke French. Yeah. And w which guests did you uh, did you have? Because I assume you had guests who were speaking but different languages. Europe, so it was quite easy because I have only quite uh, only French. Uh, but I was in charge of Belgium uh, guests, so I have French and Dutch. A lot of colleagues were Dutch. So I start to uh, use a little bit the Dutch I learned from school. Yeah. Um, well, my Dutch was not so bad, but to be honest, it was not perfect. Of course and, not. When uh, you finish school. Yeah, I start to speak uh, uh, Dutch there. After uh, that, that was quite okay because it was Morocco, so everybody speaks French there. It was exactly. quite easy for me. Uh, but then <laughs> I was in Egypt, and then you can speak uh, French with a camel, and it's exactly the same. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm speaking with the Egyptian because and it's completely normal. He doesn't understand French. And no, they don't speak French. No, and like a good French people, I expect to everyone else to speak French. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't work like that. Uh, when you start to travel, you have to uh, adapt. Use, yeah, exactly. So what I did, it's uh, try to have a little bit of internet and actually uh, download some books and uh, oh. videos to learn English again because 
at school wow. I learned a really bad in English and I have a lot of time in Egypt. Mm -hmm. So I start to learn uh, English and and just with practice and speaking with people and uh, yeah, it just came and start to be better. You learn, yeah, you start yeah, learning. I learned a lot. Uh, the fact was uh, at some point in this crazy uh, period, I moved to England. Oh, in between, uh, in between seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I moved to England for four what made you move? Why? Yeah, why did you move to England? Well, oh, I met a girl. I met a girl in England, an English girl, and uh, okay. I moved over there. I didn't happen home I really wanted, and mm -hmm. uh, it didn't actually finish on a good way. But okay. um, like I said, it's always positive. I learn English because yeah, I had definitely. a job there. And, yeah, no uh, choice. Yeah, so it was quite funny because I start to use some English expression with a French <laughs> accent. So when you have, so how it makes are you? No sense. It was really, yeah, it was no sense, but it was always take the positive. I learned the, the, the French, and yeah, this, uh, yeah, this no. is what I like about you, Timo. You really, you're really positive in in life. Even when life's throwing shit at you from the left side, from the right uh, side, in your face, you take it in a in a good way. Um, you stress in the moment, but uh, you calm down very easily, and you you can control it. Uh, yeah. You can control your situation. I think it's also why I have been manager um, mm -hmm. because it's also uh, about uh, attitude, and uh, it's true. Yeah. Uh, you you know my crazy part, and I can be a really crazy part. Uh, I think you have a uh, lot of memory with me when you're like, oh, how am I going to control this guy? <laughs> but at the same time, I can also be really. Uh, concentrate. Yeah, but, yeah. You, you have a you have a switch in your head. So when when it's time to party or when it's time to have fun, you're uh, you you're just having fun and you go all you go all in uh, all in on this. But when when you decide to work and you make the switch, it's, you're very yeah, uh, it's change, yeah. maybe strict is the the wrong word, but you're very correct. It's like you yeah, you, you expect this. I always uh, do that. You lose so much time to think about, oh, look what I have for problem. Look what I have problem. You look, mm. you lose so much time to think about the problem when you can actually use this time to find a solution. Yeah, that's, and, that's very true. And Makes sense. If, yeah, but if, if you are making a list about, look, I have this, I have this, I have this, life is going to be black. Uh, everything going to be dark. Mm -hmm. Because, Everything. of course, there's a lot of negative. But if you think about the other way, I have two hands. What can I, I do about hands. this? Yeah. I have food. I get uh, some money. So mm -hmm. I am in... You're not going to die. Lucky. Yeah, I am lucky. I, I am yeah. healthy and everything. So life is not so, so bad. Let's mm -hmm. use it and just do it. And um, I think this it, is... Yeah. Um, I think this is something I learned with traveling. It's uh, there is always worse than you, yeah. always worse than you. Exactly. And, uh, That's good to keep this perspective because um, I think many many of us get so stuck in in our own problems in in life that we sometimes forget that actually uh, everybody's life, that every person we we see in the subway, on the on the bus, in the city. His or her life is just as complicated as our own life. It's like everybody has a complicated life, full of struggle, full of problems. But it's how you how you deal with them and how you. Yeah, but we have to. You know, the the, the thing also with this job, it's um, I saw many countries where people have nothing, mm -hmm. but they give you so much more than what people actually with uh, everything doesn't do it. Like for example, uh, I was really in shock for that. When I was in Morocco, um, yeah. we are in this hotel where you have a lot of food. You have people... Um, An all-inclusive hotel, right? Yeah, yeah. people taking food until they cannot move anymore. Yeah. And at the same time, on the other side of the wall, people are not dying because this is not true. They are happy. This is not true, but they have nothing. And yeah, they, don't they, need, they, don't need, yeah, they don't need to be happy. But at the same time, you go outside and these people... Uh, they open the door to to share with you a cup of tea and you have everything home and you will never, never open your door to someone yeah. just for It's water. crazy, right? Yeah, this is crazy. And, and you crazy. learn 
you learn a lot of things like we are actually complaining when the cable from the phone it doesn't work to put your phone on charge but some yeah. people doesn't have a phone no and they have no uh, they have no uh, even no healthcare or stuff like this they don't have like electricity that. sometimes to exactly. put your phone on charge so wh when you travel like that and uh, this is also where i can see the the difference between some entertainers uh, you have mm -hmm. the entertainers or what they are expecting to have the uh, diva life and yeah. um well, like this show them. business show business uh, yeah, style, see the spotlight. Have yeah. A, a different vision but for me i think i have been uh, really friend with people like actually you understand mm -hmm. uh some people that have a different life and you have to learn how to respect them and yeah. these people are more rich than what we think i mean they have no money but they have so much uh, experience so much to share exactly uh, yeah with uh, other vision about life exactly. and uh, this is really amazing because you learn so much from these people it, it's crazy they teach you uh, how to be happy with nothing and i think this is also what changed me a lot uh, to mm. it opens your eyes definitely because yeah when i was in belgium of course you are going out uh, to party and you have yeah. people with uh, a lot of money spending uh, i don't know how many euros for for a bottle of of alcohol mm -hmm. when these people uh yeah, they have nothing and they make party with the water, a little yeah. bit of music and a little bit of light and this is too more line for them. Yeah, or and like a campfire or something like that. Exactly. They just they get some wood and they these these are the, and this some is of the nice best party. parties. Yeah. These are the nicest it's, parties. You're exactly, absolutely I have, right. Uh, in, in um so I, I didn't really do it a lot of festival and everything because yeah, actually, you I was going. a lot abroad, and uh, while well, I've been in crazy party, yeah, I walk close of Magalus, I close... Um, <laughs> Magalus close is like the, uh, the party neighborhood of uh, Mallorca, yeah, where yeah, people Magalus go... Was crazy, yeah, exactly. Costa was uh, crazy. I, I've been in Thailand, also there is a crazy... Wow. Uh, Phuket is a crazy uh, party place. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, one of my best memory was a, a small concert on the beach, a reggae concert, and I'm actually not a big fan of reggae. What, was this in uh, Was this in Phuket? Mm -hmm. It was not really Phuket. It was really on a small beach somewhere in Thailand. Okay. And yeah. uh, it was not for tourists. It was just uh, for for people. It was there. just happening. Yeah. And yeah, it's a bar. Uh, there is nothing to pay. Uh, you drink. You you pay your beer. You just enjoy. Mm -hmm. And it was two speaker and microphone, but I was one of the most famous singer in Thailand. <laughs> and um, I have one of the best concerts in my life. We don't need to make a big show with uh, a lot of light and everything. Yeah. No, we just enjoy it. It was amazing. Just the so atmosphere it, and the people yeah. and everybody's dancing as well, right? It's yeah, like you learn, people, you they, they just... a lot of... Uh, yeah, you learn a lot of, uh, of things and you learn how to change a little bit your mind about everything. Yeah. And, um, yeah, the horizon gets a little bit wider, uh, as they say. Yeah, I think that really, if we have to find a conclusion about about this uh, job, mm -hmm. it's um, you don't get rich about the salary. You don't get definitely don't get rich about the salary. Um, I don't want to complain about that because really, it's uh, I got more than enough for what I was doing. Yeah, and more um, than you would have learned otherwise yeah but uh, with you get salary. rich about the experience and how mm -hmm. you grow up and uh, you live your dream and i think this is the most important thing it's living the dream and i think you you grow up and you get rich of experience and uh, you don't need money you learn that you don't need money money is there to to survive kind of survive but it's yeah. not what you, you, you do need it for life. exactly for the basic basic needs but after this certain point after you have a house after you can pay rent uh and if you get ill you can pay your doctor's bills make sure you have food after this um there, there's a limit to how much happiness you can get from from money and it's hard to realize or it often takes uh for people up to when they are like 35 or something to realize this that they have wasted like all this let's say half their life when you're 35 that they've wasted half their life on uh on things that actually don't matter as much as you might have thought and it's very sad to realize this 
at such a late uh, at such a late age, I think. Um, so it's nice to 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 spread this and uh, to especially yeah. When you people. realize that really really early as possible, yeah, you you enjoy the life differently. It's uh, you can it's invest in different things for for yourself, such as self improvement uh, experiences and uh, yeah. The, they are very good investments to make, especially when, when you are young. Not that we are old right now, but it's nice to realize this at a young age, like you like you just said. Yeah. I totally but you know, agree it's, with it's, you. It's, it's exactly the same. Like a lot of people know they are asking me because I, I quit the job uh, of entertainer. And uh, to be really honest with all of you, I am uh, working for a call center. Mm -hmm. So I spend my whole day on the phone yeah. uh, listening to people complaining and uh, to console some uh, abandonment and a lot some, of people... Uh, wait, abandonment, I'm just thinking for the right translation. Uh, it's a sub subscription. Yeah, subscription. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's basically they, they, they sign for a contract and they want to, to stop the, the, the contract. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I spend the whole days on the phone uh, with them and and a lot of people and a lot of uh, old uh, colleagues, they are like, Timo, are you okay with that? Are you happy? And of course I am happy. Guys, you don't imagine the chance, the, how, how lucky I am. Uh, we have this crazy situation when uh, open your phone, open the newspaper, and you will see how many people are actually crying because they don't have any more money in this period. Yeah. And I found a job in this crazy period. So Which I cannot helps complain. You to get through. Yeah, you're right. I cannot complain. I cannot complain. Of course, I am sitting in front of a laptop inside, and but you cannot complain. You get paid. I yeah. am safe. Um, I actually do uh, work from home at the moment. Um, mm. I cannot complain. Of course, I have the crazy life now, but you have to see the situation. I am lucky. Yeah, and, and this it's is a global problem. This is something which I still find very hard to to understand. That it's it's not like a local, a local thing. It's I think it's very hard to to truly imagine that every single person right now in the in the world is facing this problem, and that we are maybe privileged that we are facing this from a, from a Western country in which we have ways to, like you say, still survive and make sure we. We earn some money and and get through it because it's um, it's not like this everywhere. If you have a job, don't complain about the job you have because at the moment you are lucky. I, I for me it's a French television, but it's probably the same everywhere. You see a lot of uh, um, how you say that famous people uh, mm -hmm. who probably got a lot of money during many years, and at the moment they are all uh, crying if I can say that like that, because they don't get any more money. And yeah. that can happen to everyone. In one day, everything can change. Like, to be honest, about the, the situation, you and me, we were laughing about the situation. Uh, yeah, that's a good beginning. story, actually. Yeah, we, we were in, in... We were joking about it. We were joking. And, Wait, uh, let, let's, let's uh, picture it also for the people listening. We were in Tenerife or in Gran Canaria? Where were we? No, uh, I think we were in Lanzarote, actually. Oh, yeah, we were in Lanzarote, one of the Canary uh, Islands. It was uh, in... January, I think. January yeah. or February. I think like January. It was the beginning of the corona. It was really the beginning. It was exactly. not in Italy. It was just in... in, in uh, there were a few China, cases yeah. in Europe already. Uh, uh, just yeah, a few. Yeah, yeah. It started, it started was, to spread. Yeah, I was there uh, in Lanzarote and I have a mask with me because yeah. uh, I actually have asthma. It's not really bad asthma, but I have asthma. And um, just in <laughs> So you case, flew from Belgium to, to Lanzarote, right? And I was already there. Uh, yeah, you you was uh, laughing at me and we were laughing all <laughs> together about the fact I had mask. And we are, come on, Timo, and... Yeah, we were laughing. We were about talking. That. Should we put the mask when we are going to a restaurant? And then we're like, "Oh no, of course we're not gonna wear a mask. It's uh, yeah, it's no, not that bad. Uh, it's just a flu." Yeah, we were laughing about it, but in case I had my mask. Yeah, and you were um, you came prepared. 
Yeah, yeah. And it was quite funny because also it was not the nice mask we had at the moment with nice uh, colors. And no, no, it was the painting <laughs> mask. It means with the string here. Yeah, with the filters, and the special filters exactly, on the side, exactly. the white the, ones. The, the one, the, Three, the I think it was one from... I think it was one from 3M or something like this. Yeah, it was really the the, 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 the best one, the one that actually <laughs> the doctor used. And um, yeah, I managed to find that before. And everybody um, was laughing about it. And uh, Did you wear it in the, in the plane? Actually, no. When you flew there? No. I don't think so, right? No, when we came back from... Because I think we came back from, together from Lanzarote. No. Yeah, we flew uh, back to Belgium together, exactly. We have to fly, fly together. Uh, I remember this amazing fly also when we have to run because we were in the wrong terminal in Belgium. I don't uh, remember this. Uh, come on, it was a crazy night, brother. First, my uh, father um, drive us and he got flash. Oh. Then yeah, he, got yeah. the, <laughs> he got the control. Oh. And then... Uh, yeah, there was uh, a... We didn't walk up in the hotel. Then the uh, taxi never came to drive. Yeah, us we ordered airport. a taxi in the hotel in the morning. It was very er a very early morning flight. I think we had to fly six uh, six o'clock, six thirty, something like yeah. this in the morning. And then uh, we ordered a taxi exactly at he the reception came. the night before, and he never came. He, he just he didn't show up. We were waiting there, <laughs> never came. And uh, then, and then uh, we have a transfer from the hotel uh, yeah. to the airport. Then uh, the transfer uh, actually drives us to the wrong terminal. <laughs> <laughs> we have to yeah, we run. were in the, the wrong terminal, exactly. Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, it was amazing. And then also there, I didn't wear a mask. It was the same. I didn't wear a mask. Uh, no, where I started to wear a mask. Uh, it's actually when I went to Mallorca for training. This was March, uh, right? They start March to be really bad. 2020. They start to be really bad when we were there. Uh, yeah, I think this is me. this is also the moment we went in lockdown in in Belgium. Uh, no, not I think, yeah, yes, and I not. think it was. I think it was. On the end, I think yes, schools were yeah. closed already. Yeah, I think by the time you came back to Belgium, we were already in lockdown. The thing was, we were there, everything was fine. Um, but the corona start, especially in Spain, and I was just in Spain, then Spain start to be one of the first countries to have a lockdown. Mm. And uh, we were uh, locked down in the hotel, but it was quite a big hotel just for us, so it was not a big, big thing. And we were all together already since the beginning, so it was more than safe for us. But we can see what's going on outside, so we of all course. start to be a little bit uh, scared. And I think it's normal. And then I have to go home. I finally um, managed to, to have a fly home, but I didn't have a direct fly because all the flights were cancelled. I had to go through Denmark to go back home. Wow. Um, That's really a, a big uh, <laughs> detour. And uh, yeah, for the first time, I decided to wear a mask. Uh, yeah. the whole trip, yeah. The whole flight from Mallorca to Denmark yeah. to Belgium. Yeah, yeah, because I realized it started to be serious. Yeah. And uh, also, no, I think we start to know a little bit more about uh, this virus. But at yeah. this time, we had no idea uh, of why it was. And uh, with the kind of asthma I had, uh, yeah, at this time, I start to be, uh, I think it, it was, you know, I have been, that's something I didn't speak about it. I have been in a lot of, uh, of what the media are going to call dangerous situation. But it's what can the you, media... Can you give called. an example? So I was in, uh, in Egypt when there was a terrorist attack. I was uh, in Tunisia when there was also a war in Libya and a lot of people came from this country there. And um, I have been in, in Kos also when all the migrants uh, came through Whoa, Turkey. Oh, you... Yeah. I've been there... So also. it's 2017, I think. No, 16? 16, I don't I remember. But to be honest... Uh, you know, it's a lot of things when you are there on the destination and uh, it's completely fine. It's completely fine. But you see at the television and newspaper, they yeah, are making, uh, making bigger. <laughs> bigger when it's completely safe. And to be honest, I never been scared. I have been in a lot of crazy situation and I really never been uh, uh, scared, really scared. 
But uh, yeah, when I came back from uh, Mallorca, when Corona mm -hmm. started, yes, I. Then you, to... this was the scariest moment for you. Uh, uh, this in... And this is the yeah. only moment in my life since I was entertainer I realized, no, I want to be home. Uh, no, I mm. want to be with uh, with my family because it starts to be a real uh, risk. This is yeah. the only time. And, and this like is when I you said, decided to, yeah. to come like back. Like I said, I, I have been in a lot of crazy uh, situation and it looked dangerous from outside. Safe. But uh, <laughs> with my with uh, what happened when I was in Mallorca with this corona, is the first time I actually uh, changed my mind and said, no, I want to be with the people I love. And um, yeah, it's really changed a lot of things. This is how I decide yeah. uh, to stop. Well, Corona also helped me to decide after it. But um, this is when I took my decision. I was actually at the training. When you were thought, really sure, it was playing around in your head already, but this was like yeah, the deciding yeah. factor for yeah, you. Yeah, I, I spoke with uh, a few people about it, uh, but not so much. Yeah. But I actually went to the training uh, with the idea to do one or two seasons, not more, because after that, I have some plan, uh, more personal plan, because I am mm -hmm. 32 and I want to, to make a family where it's not really easy, not impossible, but not yeah. easy with this kind when of When you're shop. moving all the time. Yeah, yeah. And um, the plan was actually moving to Canary Island with my girlfriend mm. uh, to start a life there. And with all hype uh, uh, happened, um, I decided to see the thing different yeah, and, and I realized... Um, this is no. how you ended up to yeah. moving to the Netherlands uh, and now living uh, living together yes, with your you girlfriend. To, uh, you have to see yeah. things in front and um, that changed a lot of plans. And change your priorities. You, you basically, your priorities shifted. Uh, I think you're in a new chapter in your life now. You're th How old are you now? 30? 32, yeah. 32, yeah. Thir yeah. So you're 32 now and um, you had all this, like the, the new experiences and the, the crazy lifestyle. And uh, it was playing around in your in your head already for a few years, uh, but Corona really made the final yeah, like decision I for you. Always take the, the, the positive. Uh, no, I have new project. Of course, and there's a, a new future full of different experiences and new new yeah, things uh, ahead of this you. Is, uh, Amazing. It, it, it's good thing. Uh, no, I have new project. I have new life. Uh, everything is going good. I have uh, I have a roof. I have car. I have job. I have uh, people who I love, and uh, this is the and best. And you're healthy. Thing. And you're healthy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm amazing. Then perfect. I only have uh, actually uh, a, a few more things I want to ask you before we yeah, yeah. before we finish this. Uh, and it's um, do you have any advice to people uh, who are interested to to start working in this uh, sector? Maybe not now, but in the foreseeable future, once the uh, tourism yeah. sector settles down a little bit. Do you have any? advice to people who would like to work in this in this sector well make sure um you you really want it uh like i said you have to leave your dream but make sure it's really your dream uh, i saw a lot of people uh, starting this job and being lost mm. because it's not what they expected and i think um you can have the best experience of your life if uh you get the the, the good information before you start I think I think if you are open for it. Yeah, but um, the thing it's a lot of people expect to have the holidays uh, alive, and yeah. um, when we tell them this is not holidays, I, I know, I know, but they actually don't uh, yeah. understand and expect, and they see that uh, really different. Of course, you're gonna have the best life ever, but uh, it's not gonna be uh, everything easy. Uh, easy and let's say. Um, Pink, like you can, you can. Yeah, be, uh, you don't see it through the pink sunglasses, as they. I think they say this in English as well. It's it's a different uh, uh, thing. Uh, so if you want to do it, make sure you are ready to do it. And also, mm. I think the most complicated part, and that really it's for all the entertainer I saw. Keep in mind, you leave your family and your friends, and make sure you are ready for it, because. Yeah. Everything, everything, all the problems can happen. This problem about leaving your family and your friend is the whole point. It's this is the, the hardest part. Thing. And we all, all, all have this. Yeah. I'm missing them. And make sure you are strong enough to do it. Because, yeah. and there's no, no problem to don't be strong about it. Because 
Uh, yeah, you don't have to be, feel yeah. bad about it or be ashamed about it. Not. But make sure you are uh, strong enough to do it because that's going to destroy your life and the life of the people around you. Because you're going to call your family crying, you're going to make them more sad. And yeah. there's nothing uh, more better for your family to see you happy. For example, I don't see my family since really long time, but when they call me and they see me smiling, enjoying my life, they're happy for me. They feel good, so, yeah, they feel good. Exactly. So I think this is really the, the whole thing. Make sure you are strong enough to do it and ready for yeah, it. You're absolutely right. And then uh, my, uh, my final question for you, Timo, is um, imagine you are 23, you're working as a graphic designer, would you decide to go uh, and work again in this uh, entertainment sector? Yes, probably yes, because it was my, my, my best life. But maybe I'm going to do the thing uh, different. Okay. Can you give me one example? But I don't know, because I feel um, I did quite a few mistakes in the, mm -hmm. in the parkour, because uh, I start for this company, like I said, and this uh, company actually lost all contracts, so I have to uh, start from the bottom again. Yeah. And uh, this is how my do more story. research, maybe. Yeah, and um, it's it's nice to to go, but you have to think about going and home you are going, uh, because like I said, I start with this company with nearly nothing for salary. I got uh, four hundred fifty euro, and um, okay, it was nice, but if I think a little bit more. Um, should I start with a company like that? That was the whole point. So yeah. you you have to to. It's nice to live your dream, but keep thinking about the positive and negative, and go if you are sure it's gonna be good for you. Amazing. Then really, uh, Timo, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate you joining me for the for the very first episode ever of Ciao Ciao Bye Bye. Um, just uh, tell the listeners what, uh, where they can find you on, uh, on social media, so if they want to check you out, they can, they can find you where? Well, um, at the moment, I'm, I'm a little bit more quiet on the social media, because, uh, like I said, the life really changed, and uh, I'm a little bit more quiet, but I'm really active on uh, Instagram, so you're going to probably mm -hmm. put my Instagram here, I'm always dreaming to do that. Exactly, so you can, it. <laughs> you can uh, tell it also for the people who are just listening on their phone, they can yes, uh, they can uh, job. Graffiti so um, you can find me uh, on it and uh, it's a lot of, uh, of uh, picture about myself is the whole point of Instagram <laughs> um, but uh, being in a lot of different places and um, a lot of, uh, of fun and nice uh, pictures yes yeah so for the people also watching or uh, you can also check the show notes or the description down below you can find Timo's Instagram uh, over there. Then uh, finally, my my last question, the very last question for you, Timo. Uh, who would you like me? Uh, who would who would you like to uh, hear me joining for a different episode of Ciao Ciao Bye Bye? Who would you like to hear here? Uh, I have quite few people. I have quite few people. And <laughs> okay, um, you can you can list me. Uh, you can list me three, maximum three. If you uh, really want to go. Uh, if you have a list, you can give me three. We have, uh, for the people who are outside of, of, of this whole thing, they won't really understand. But we have one legend in this job. Uh, I think actually, I know what you're talking about. We have, we have, um, we have in Star Wars, you have Padawan and you have a Jedi. <laughs> yeah. And this guy, it's, it's uh, the... He it's, is the it's Force. over the Jedi. He's over the Jedi. <laughs> He is the and, force. Yeah, and uh, some some people um, know him in the company, and uh, you and me, we saw him uh, changing, growing up in the company, and he's a real legend. And I think, but not at the first one, you should wait a little bit. Wait a little bit, yeah. We definitely need uh, Gogo in this uh, in this part. And, I agree. Uh, I think you should have uh, also uh, someone who actually uh, have been someone I actually really want to say thank you because you believe me oh. uh, since the first day uh, I start with Toy and I, I never never forget the day when I heard the interview I was uh, sick 
uh, honestly, uh, if you let me the go day you out, applied see, for the for the job, yeah, yeah, it was during my interview. If you let me go out, see how I was at the moment. Everybody gonna think I had the corona already seven <laughs> years, or five years ago. I was sick like crazy, but I decided to go to the interview because I wanted this job. Yeah. It's um, someone I really want to say thank you because he trusts me, and not one time he trusts me a lot of time and give me more than one chance because I did the wrong choice. And um, he let me come back a lot of time. I really thank you for that. I think you should ask to uh, Dimitri, who was uh, the person who created and the, the probably the best concept because we didn't really spoke about the concept. We worked for it. We can um, go in depth maybe exactly in a different uh, episode. Yeah, uh, but the, the, the thing was, it's this kind of concept was uh, completely for me. And um, we didn't understand that from the beginning because I've been on the concept. Mm -hmm. But what this guy create is exactly what I wanted. Nothing it was made less. for you. He did, he did nothing. And I, I actually don't know if I never told him that. And I hope he's going to watch it, but I'm sure he's going to watch this episode. We'll tell um, him this part of the, of the episode to make sure. Well, um, he actually made the concept exactly how yeah. I wanted. Nothing less, nothing more. It was exactly what I wanted. So and that's I, why you stayed for so long, probably. Yeah, yeah. and this is why also I uh, wasn't sure to grow up in the company because I didn't want to lose. So it means oh. I love I love this concept and this job so much, I was ready to don't grow up in the company to make sure to stay in this concept, uh, to explain quickly to the people we had a concept, uh, you are entertainer, you are team leader, so it means you are in charge of one team, and then you yeah. are being a manager. It means you go out of the concept and you are in charge of all the concepts. Yeah, of different, uh, different types of hotels as well, from exactly. three stars to four and star, five stars. I have been entertainer, I have been team leader, and I started to be manager. And it took time for me to accept the fact to be manager because I still in the business of entertainer. But I I leave this concept and for me this concept it's is the best one. It's the best one. And of course everybody have different tests. You can you can plug the concept. If you wanna say the name of the concept, go for no, it. No, it's it's not about that, you know, it's not about the, 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 the name or anything. It really doesn't matter. But what it creates it's uh, what I wanted. This is what I wanted and what I was expected. So, of Amazing. course, uh, it was our old manager. And, uh, yeah, so I think you definitely need, when you make an um, uh, episode, to explain what was this concept. You yeah. need Dimitri to explain you. That would uh, be very nice to have him on the, yeah. on the show. And if I Amazing. have to choose someone else, like we said, three people, I think it's someone, um, I had a lot of different colleagues, uh, I loved a lot of different people, but mm -hmm. it's one person, I can feel it, um, I give him the passion I have for the, for the job. Um, he came there uh, really shy, and in six months, I don't expect to change people, this is not my yep. job, uh, but in six months, he changed so much. He grew. And, if I, I, I don't have the, I don't know how you call that in, in, in English, but I don't have the, 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 the dig neck to, to, to tell. Ah, uh, you don't have the, you don't um, yeah. want to seem jerky, you don't want to be a show off, that's the word. Uh, you don't want yeah, to be yeah, a show off. I, I, I don't want to say it, but how this person change and I can see uh, how much I give him my passion and he starts from. I just do one season just for fun. Two, I want to grow up in this business. I, yeah. I want to travel. And I actually uh, give him what I, I your, want. Your fire. Yeah, and, and the thing is, when I saw how he started, make me think like, okay, no, I can't start. I can't stop because someone else is doing what I wanted to do. Yeah. And continue to you do what the, I was doing. You gave the torch to him, and it's his, exactly. uh, you exactly. see, it's his task to to keep and protect the torch right now. And he walks. Um, he start to be uh, team leaders. Um, uh, now he have uh, opportunity to 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 grow up, um, to change. Mm -hmm. 
he have a lot of experience of course it's not always easy for him but this is the, the for me during all this season one of the the, the most important people uh, person and um I, he's still a big friend for me we are nearly in contact every week so i think he's gonna be uh, one of my entertainer from uh, many years ago two years ago so it's a uh, patrick i think he definitely have to explain because um yeah he came from being a kid and living as an adult i don't have the pretension to say it's because of me no no but i saw a big change in this person but you feel and you uh, feel honored that you could see him uh, almost like evolve like a pokemon is this more like what you mean you saw him like no, it's, it's, well yeah well i saw the evolution but I, it's definitely not because of me i am glad to no 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 to have the um, the person to share the same uh, valor um, uh, um uh, values yeah we have the same value now yeah. and uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, I really appreciate that, and uh, it's a really a big friend of me. And uh, now, and uh, yeah, I think it would be interesting to speak about that because he really most definitely he, he came the opposite of me. He came with the idea of let's do party. But <laughs> that's the job. So it's actually a big <laughs> difference. He didn't have any information before he just like i saw light i saw he went for it the opportunity to have fun let's do it and uh, he have no idea about the job but he came (laughs) and uh now it's probably one of the best also so um he's very good yeah i agree um so yes i think it will be interesting to see his uh his uh opinion about all of it amazing thank you very much timo uh, really, thanks again for, for being here. It was a pleasure to talk to you uh, once more, and uh, really, I hope to, to see you again soon. With 1 meter 50, brother. With 1 meter 50, Maya. <laughs> we need to keep our distance. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be wearing one of the masks you brought for me yeah, to, uh, yeah. to Lazarus. I, I still have, I still have actually. I hope you enjoyed listening to the very first episode today. I would like to thank our guest Timo for joining me today. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube or whatever platform you use. I'd be grateful if you could leave us a review and share it. If you have any thoughts on today's episode or topics you would like me to further touch on, email me at info at Thanks again. See you next week. And as always, ciao ciao. Bye bye.